Hello, my name is Kyle Meadows. I'm a paramedic with Cox CMS. Today we're going to go over the RACE uh, stroke scale or the Rapid Arterial Occlusion Evaluation. This does not replace the Cincinnati Stroke Scale or the LA Pre-Hospital Stroke Screen. Um, what you want to do is use those to screen whether your patient is uh, potentially having a stroke and then we use the RACE scale to determine how severe that is and the likelihood of a large vessel occlusion. Um, so we'll jump right into it. The first things we want to do is check facial palsy. And so you want to turn to your patient and ask them to smile, much like we do in the Cincinnati pre-hospital screen. So have them smile. And then what you're looking for is severity of droop on the affected side. Uh, we're going to score this from zero to two. Uh, zero is no effect. Uh, one is a mild effect. And then a two is a severe, complete uh, muscle drop on the affected side. All right, can you smile for me? Show me your teeth. Next, what we'll do is check arm motor function. So you have the patient raise both their hands, palm up preferably, and you wanna uh, check motor function of the arms by watching for droop or drifting of the arms. This is also gonna be scored from a zero to a two. Um, as she sits right now, this is a zero, uh, no deficit. But if the affected side were to say, drop slightly, uh, but still maintain, we would give that a one. And if her arm fell rapidly to the bed, then that would be a score of two. All right, I'm gonna have you hold up your arms. Hold them there for 10 seconds, okay? All right, next, uh, we wanna test leg motor function, much like the arms. Um, obviously, you can't have them raise both legs at the same time, so we'll, have, we'll start with one leg, raise your leg up. Hold it there for 10 seconds for me. Much like the arms, we wanna see how well they can hold this up uh, to check for motor deficits. Uh, this is also gonna be a zero to two scale. Uh, zero is no deficit, uh, a one is a slight drifting, and of course, if they cannot lift it or it drops immediately, then that is gonna be a two as well. All right, please raise your leg up here and hold that for me for 10 seconds right there. Next, you wanna check head and gaze deviation by observing the eyes and the head for uh, involuntary turning to one side or the other. Typically, you'll see this uh, turn to the left or eye gaze to the left. Uh, unlike the rest or the earlier parts of the assessment, this is only scaled from a zero to one. It's either happening or it is not. So it'll be a zero if you do not see any head or eye deviation, and it will be a, a one if you do notice that they're doing this involuntarily. All right, turn your head all the way to the left for me, all the way to the right. All right, face forward and follow my finger without moving your head. Very good. If you do notice head or eye deviation, like I said, it will typically be to the left. Um, a good note for that is they're probably looking towards the side of the stroke. You'll usually see body deficits on the opposite side of the stroke but gaze and head deviation will look towards the stroke. So remember that when you're out in the field. After you have gone through the first parts of uh, the race stroke scale and determined um, weakness or uh, unilateral deficits, uh, you want to adjust your assessment from this point based on your findings. If your weakness is more on the left side of the body, what we're typically looking for is a, a condition called agnosia. Uh, with agnosia, the patient is usually unable to identify uh, the field of vision on the left side and the left side of their body, or even be aware of it. So we want to test for that. Uh, first thing you want to do is have them raise their left arm, or raise their left arm for them, and ask them, whose arm is this? And if they do not uh, recognize that arm, or they say it's somebody else's, or they do not know, then that shows a deficit. And then secondly, what we want them to do is raise their hands and clap. And so you can instruct them and then ask them, raise your hands and clap. Go and do it. Very good. Um, if they're able to recognize that it's their arm and perform the task, then they'll get a zero. If uh, they fail at one of those tasks, then that's, they would get a score of one. And if they cannot recognize their arm, nor can they perform the action you asked, then that will be a score of two, much like the earlier pieces of the assessment, this is scored zero to two. Conversely, 
Uh, if the patient has weakness or deficits on the right side, they typically have an inability to follow commands or uh, understand written or spoken words. So we want to test that ability. So you want to have them do two tasks. Uh, please close your eyes and then raise your hand and make a fist. Very good. Thank you. If she can do both of those, then we give her a score of zero. If she could only perform one of those tasks, that would be a score of one. And obviously, if she could not um, complete either of those tasks, that would be a score of two. Much like the previous assessments, this is also a score of zero to two. Some key notes when performing the race evaluation. As with any altered mental status patient and any suspected stroke patient, uh, we, w we want you to obtain a blood glucose to rule out any uh, blood sugar issues. Also be aware if the patient has any history of seizures. Um, as another note, when performing your weakness assessments, if both arms drift or both legs drift at about the same rate, uh, be aware that that might just be general weakness for that patient and that might be a normal for them. If that occurs, we would score that as their normal and uh, put those associated assessments at a score of zero and assess from there. Remember that it is important to memorize the steps of the race evaluation. Uh, you will be asked to deliver the score that you've come up with to the receiving facility during your report and when you arrive. A stroke patient is considered a TCD, a time critical diagnosis. A score of five or greater would show a high index of suspicion for a large vessel occlusive stroke. Uh, the race evaluation has a high specificity and sensitivity for large vessel occlusion. And these patients are excellent candidates for invasive therapies, including uh, clot removal in the cardiac cath lab. So in recap, when performing the race evaluation, we'll start uh, by checking for facial palsy. You'll have the patient smile and determine on a scale of zero to two how severe that is. Uh, second, we'll, we'll move to arm function, uh, checking for the severity of drift or weakness in that arm. Um, next, you'll move on to the leg. Uh, same thing, we're checking for uh, weakness or deficit um, in the ability to hold up their legs. And then once you've determined that there's a weakness on one side or the other, again, remember to the left, we're worried about agnosia, uh, which is the inability to recognize um, the left side of the body or the left arm. Um, and the right side, uh, we're worried about them unable to follow commands.